Hello and welcome back to the fish locker. Out for a walk. Now it is a glorious day, isn't it? It's a bit windy. Right, we've got a little bit of a wind running off the top of this hill. But hopefully, there are, if you can see, down the ways there, there are people surfing, aren't there, James? What we're going to do is we're planning on going for a little bit of a walk along an area of coast, trying to find somewhere sheltered out of the wind and yet still in the sun. And we're going to try and have a little bit of a cook up. So, where are we going to go now? Which way? That way? On, onwards. Onwards. So, yeah, we'll see how we get on. Are you steering, are you? <laughs> <laughs> This could be the reason why my ears stick out so much. Oh, when you get out of the wind it's nice, isn't it? Like a summer's day. It is the end of January. Things are just starting to come through. We've got daffodils coming through. We've had snowdrops. We're going to soon have bluebells. But one of the things that's coming through right now is these here. And you can see them round there. I do have another video that was from, I think it was March time last year, up this same area. So I know that those are three cornered leeks, also a type of wild garlic. If we can find any up here that are fresh shoots, I don't like collecting them from next to a fence because a dog could have come past here. So if I can find some up there I might be able to collect some. Yeah, it's um, like wild garlic. Also called three cornered leek. When the flower stems come out and you snap them off, you've got a perfectly triangular cross section. That's a better place to collect some. Can you hear the birds? Yeah. See if you can spot them for me. They're hiding somewhere in this gorse. You're not blowing your nose in my hair again, are you? No. Are you sure? No. Because what happened last time? I yeah, I had bogies in my hair, didn't I? Yeah. Oh no, we've got a tunnel. How are we going to get through there? Whoa. I fell off. What's happened? <laughs> Your hat got stuck. Yeah. <laughs> Go on and grab it. Oh, it's grab it then. That's it's oh, you it's need to get hold of it. Use your man strength. Oh. Put your hat back on. Mum, my hat got stuck. Is it? Are we ready to go now? I would like to say that we made it down there without any casualties but I think that I have a muddy bottom What happened? I held it down here, didn't Yeah, you held it over my eyes and I couldn't see and I slipped So, yeah We have got some lovely conditioned kelp here These big fronds of kelp What I might do actually is I'm going to, these big pieces of kelp, this is serrated rack, we have some dulse and on some of the rocks like here we have some sea lettuce. What I am going to do is I will collect some fresh seaweeds and we'll cook those up as well. They are in really good condition. You can generally tell, can't you? I mean, these, these have been dead a while. These are battered and, and past their best. Whereas if you can find some, look at that, that's still plush and green.
this here actually that's Irish moss but this and this and all of this on these rocks is pepper dulse some pom-pom weed but these these flat fern weeds and there that's pepper dulse there aren't actually any poisonous seaweeds so technically they're all edible just some are nicer to eat than others like with most things it all depends on how hungry you are but yeah I'm, I'm definitely going to collect up some of the plush dulse sea lettuce and some nice big kelp fronds there I have some plush sea lettuce some nice fresh grown dulse I'm going to steam those and this is some kelp you can see how it's nice and clean it's got no bits on it the occasional little bits on the ends but we're going to cook with this we're going to cook that and we're going to cook with this and this here is rock samphire fantastic for adding flavour three cornered leek rock samphire edible seaweeds and salmon delicious John and James are just getting the fire started so I'm going to start prepping the salmon so we've got two pieces of salmon one of them we're going to have a go at wrapping in some kelp with some other yummy ingredients inside and then the other one we're going to parcel in some baking parchment and some tin foil so we're almost testing out nature versus man-made cooking methods which will be interesting so I have got some red onion. I did bring some red onion with me in case we didn't find anything else, but we've got the rock samphire and the three cornered leek. Just gonna chop up some onion as well. All I'm doing is I'm just breaking down some little pieces of pallet wood into kindling because the fire that we're gonna be cooking with, it's not so much flames on the fire, it's gonna be the embers of the fire. John went down to Seaborn's fish to get this salmon this morning. We haven't had the weather to get out fishing, so we thought we would take advantage of our local fishmongers to show you something different for a change. And um, I let John road test the tin cooking method with the mackerel. When he didn't die, I thought I'd come along too. Right, so this one we're gonna do in the foil and baking parchment just going to add in some red onion you could do this really easily at home in your oven in fact I do oven baked salmon quite frequently just parcel it like this in parchment and tin foil pop it into an like a roasting tray with some water in the bottom I usually parcel it up with onions garlic tomatoes you could add some soy honey chili salmon is such a versatile fish there's so many flavors that go with it and it's really really simple and quick to cook i'm going to add in some of the three cornered leek as well a couple of slices of lemon so cracked black pepper cracked sea salt and then i'm just going to pop on a little slice of butter just going to pop that on the top there and I'm going to roll the parchment over and then I'm going to almost make a pasty with the foil because we're in Cornwall so I'm going to crimp it on the top So I'm just sorting out some of the fronds of kelp. I'm just going to lay them out so I can pop the salmon on top and then we're going to roll it in itself. Anything you get from the shore or any vegetation that you forage wildly, make sure you wash it before you use it. Just pick up one of them kelp fronds, the whole thing. That's what it comes as. It comes all connected up at the top in a big frond. So all Hannah's done is just take them off. You could leave it all together like that. I just like to make it neat.
And then just like I did with the foil and baking parchment, I'm just going to lay the salmon on top of it. Just lay the salmon on top of it. Then we'll pop on some of the samphire that John collected. Some of the three-cornered leek. Red onion. Do you want crazy garlic or do you think that onion is No, I'm good. That'll be enough. enough. Add in the lemon. Season it. And some butter. And then, this is a first for me. All you're doing is you just parcel it up, you just roll it up. Like this? Yeah. Okay. Just obviously remember which way oh. is up. Yeah. Just trim those edges off. All you need to do is you just need to remember which way is skin is side, so skin side needs to be done. We're going to have a try of steaming some of the seaweed as well. So we've got some sea lettuce and some dulse and we're just literally going to parcel it up inside of the kelp. Have it as like a side salad. All the kelp's there for really is just to keep some moisture in to let it steam on the inside. James and I have built a fire. Here we go. You'll notice that I've laid some flat stones down underneath as a bit of a fire pit. And all this is, is just little offcuts of discarded, which is a pallet from projects in the fish locker workshop. Now I've mentioned this in other videos before but if you're ever going to be having a fire on a beach and you're going to be putting stones like in a fire, on a fire or around a fire, you need to be careful because if the, if a rock has been collected from down there somewhere or like up there underneath where all the water's running down there can be water inside the stone, the stone can be impregnated with water. You put it in a fire, the water turns to steam, the rock can explode. So all of these stones were collected from up here, above the high tide line. We aren't going to be cooking on the fire, we're going to be letting the fire die down to coals. So I'm going to build it up a little bit more to build some up, and then I'll talk to you, talk to you about our cooking tin. You're going to put a little bit more wood on it? Yeah. Go on then, good lad. Anybody who's watched our videos before, you may immediately recognise my cooking tin. It's just a biscuit tin, a sweet tin, shortbread tin, that type of thing. You get a Christmas. And all I've done with it is, you can use it for smoking or cooking or boiling or anything like that on a fire. Here all I've done, as you can see, is this is the mesh out of a disposable barbecue. And I've just bent it so it fits inside of the tin. Now, if I was going to be smoking something, all you do is just put some sawdust in there, lay your fish on top of the mesh, put the lid on, put it on the fire. Here we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be steaming in this tin. Exactly the same as before, you'll have your little mesh. All we're going to do is put a little bit of water in the bottom of there, put the parcels of kelp and of tin foil on top of the mesh, put the lid on, then put it on the coals in the fire. As simple as that. Right, we've got the fire down to burning down to coals now, it's almost ready for it to go on. And you can see all I've done is I've put some seawater underneath the mesh. So we'll, I think we'll do the salmon first and then we'll do the uh, seaweed afterwards. So you have salmon parceled in tin foil. Oh, this might be a tight fit. This. <laughs> just. Just gonna fit. They shouldn't take any more than 15 minutes, but I think after 10 minutes we'll do the old knife to lip test. Also, if you're thinking about this you're going to say immediately if you put that tin on there and it builds steam you're going to build pressure and it's going to explode. Don't put your lid on fully tight. This is going to be on, if you can see it's just cocked at the edge there, just enough to let a little bit of pressure out because if you don't otherwise your tin might explode.
and we'll go and have a look now and see if we can't find me some delicious uh, limpets. I've come down into the rocks to try and find me a couple of juicy limpets. And all you need to do is you just need to look in the crevices. There they are. Some, John. Now these are a little bit small. There's also a few tucked up in there. We want to be looking for some that are about that big. That's a good one there, what James has found. And how do you get them off, James? Using the knife! Using your a adventure knife. knife! Right, so get your adventure knife out. My knife? Yeah. And then you, and then you go like in like that, don't you? Yeah, do and then, flip. there you go. And you got one? Yeah! One here and one Yay. here. A little bit small, we'll maybe come back to him. But yeah, I'm not planning on taking a lot. This is just to show you. There's some big ones, James. You want to come and help me get these off? There's a good one there. If you're quick, you can sometimes get them off with your fingers. Otherwise, you're better off going like that. There, see. You gonna help me get that one there, James? Right. Come here with your adventure knife then. Right, you need to be quick. You need to go in quick at the side and go. Oh, no, too slow. Right, let me have a quick look. There you go, see? Some big ones behind you. I think three will do. Enough? Sure? Yeah, three will do me. If you can see there, you can see the steam coming out the sides, can't you? The swords up me wellies. Needless to say, thick gloves. You ready? I'm ready. They've been in for just under 10 minutes. If you can see into there, the water is properly boiling. You can hear it. Yeah. Oh, the colour of the kelp's gone. Yeah. That's until that's almost done. Couple more minutes for luck. Yeah. The method of wrapping in kelp there, you could have cooked straight onto the coals like that. Could have just wrapped it in kelp and as the fire had died down to like it is now, just put it straight on the coals and maybe even piled some coals on top of it. We will try that in another in another video. This was cooking in a tin. These, as you can see, they look even more appealing now. Yeah, this is the little head end you can see poking out there inside of here. And actually, an interesting fact to anybody is the hardest known naturally occurring substance in the world is a limpet's tooth. Right, what we did the first check. I put the seaweed in there as well because I knew that wasn't going to take as long. And there we are. You can see that it's just coals what it was cooking on there. And I will. I don't know anybody that ever owns a pair of these that when they first get them out they don't go. How do you know if they work if you don't? Mm. This is, I'll tell you what, I'll take the tinfoil one out first because it'll be easier to move. <laughs> this one, the kelp is... A bit slimy. No, it, it's just softened right up. And I'm conscious that when I pick it up, it's not going to... There's one. That actually could do a little bit longer. So what I'll do is I will put the limpets on. Do you want the butter? Yeah, all I'm going to do with these limpets is I'm just going to stand them upside down in the mesh, like that. And put a little knob of butter in there. Right, the big reveal. Spin the, yeah. Did a few wraps of this kelp, <laughs> didn't we? <laughs> 
That smells so good. Look at that. Tell you what. God, it's like a pro cooked it for you. Yeah. So, fresh salmon with three cornered leek, rock samphire, and oh, look at just just falling apart. Look. Amazing. Amazing. Oh, that's so good. Some salmon? Mm -hmm. No? Alright, snack box. So good. <laughs> I'm try mine, see if there's a difference. Yeah. I think mine tells the flavour a little bit more. You've got it's got a different flavour, isn't it? That tastes a little bit smoky almost. I don't know. Have you, have you tried kelp. some of the senpai mm -hmm. Would you like to try a piece? No, thank you. I just said no, thank you. Okay. Thought you might want to try a bit of mine. We cooked dabs in seaweed. That ribbon, you know, as well as done. Mm. What? It's sweet. Mm. Like properly sweet. It's almost like it's caramelised it, isn't it? It was just on a, it was like a berry. <laughs> Any day. Wish got more. <laughs> yeah, I wish I'd bought the whole salmon. Wow. I don't I can't even like say how good that tasted. <laughs> well, to give you some type of an example, there. Oh same. Absolutely amazing. Just both worked really well, but obviously keeping it in the paper and the foil. It did hold the juice a bit better than this one, didn't it? We did notice that there was a different flavour from the kelp to the parchment. And definitely, well, you can see how much juice is left in the bottom of there. Both of them were cooked absolutely perfectly. And I mean, amazing. The onion, the, the uh, lemon, everything was just perfect. The one in the kelp was not as moist. It wasn't dry, not in the slightest, but it wasn't as moist as what Hannah's was. Hannah's, you can see, it's still sort of like sitting in a bit of soup. It was um, absolutely delicious. The red onion was almost, it, it turned into that sweet, it was almost like, like a sweet berry. Uh, the rock samphire and the three-cornered leek cooked perfectly, added just enough flavour and was, was, it wasn't too bitter, was it? I mean, you tried it. No, not If too. you get too much of that rock samphire and it's, it's not cooked properly, it can be a little bit almost synthetic tasting, like a little bit like paraffin. But it was amazing. It was if you didn't, I think if we didn't have both the methods and we just had that, we wouldn't have known that it wasn't moist. Like it wasn't dry, no, it no. just wasn't as moist. Yeah. And at the back of us here, I have my dessert, which is seaweed and limpets. How long was that in total? I think we left it about 18 minutes, but obviously we're airing on the side of caution. It was cooked perfectly. Not only that, but I had the lid off. I had the lid off a couple of times to check and then to put the seaweed in as well. So, yeah. Let's check on the limpets and the seaweed. <laughs> right. It gives you an idea of how it's boiling on the inside of there. The limpets, I'm not going to say that they look very appetising, but all I did was I just laid them upside down and put a little bit of butter in there. It did go down a little bit. Just give me a second to get this out of here and then you can rebuild the fire up. And a steamed seaweed. 
I well. can smell them. After all of after all of the wonderful aromas that we were getting from the salmon, I can smell them limpets. <laughs> uh, also, if you look at what's left of the inside of here, I can just smell limpet in there now. Before the aroma was absolutely delicious and the water smelt lovely. Right, that was the seaweed wrap from the salmon. The beauty of all this is, because I cooked it in seaweed and everything, and it's just salmon skin, we set this down and put it in a rock pole, put it under a rock. You get some, some gobies and some crabs, I'll pick through that. I won't beat about the bush. <laughs> Been procrastinating about this. Right. I'll take the head off. Right, Hannah. What does that look like? I don't know and what I'm to, say, to say, I know, I know that this is going to be chewy. I can feel it in my hand. By trying to cut through it, look, it's like just <laughs> like solid. It's like the bottom of your welly. I don't want to spit it out because I'm on camera. Do you not get paid enough for this? <laughs> we were just talking about this. If um, if I was on a desert island and I was starving and I was stuck and there was nothing else to eat, I could probably eat these. But right now, I've just eaten salmon and that is disgusting. <laughs> and we'll have a look at the seaweed. I'll just unroll this. It's, oh, it's, see the steam coming off it, it's still... See the dulce has changed colour quite a lot. The sea lettuce has just... Still green! Just salty greens. Just honestly, it's just like kale or lettuce or anything like that. That you'd have your Sunday in there, but it's salty. Yeah, no difference in that. Stay down here. Same with the dulse. Um, a couple of washes in fresh water. Sorry, a couple of washes in fresh water would have probably taken down a bit of that salt. Plus, we cooked it in kelp that was salty. Nice, nice, but just salty. Like I mean, very salty. This will do. Just your salmon skins. And your kelps. There we go. We're all packed up. Got the rest of the wood on the fire. Mainly so I don't have to carry it back with us. And the last of our bread, we are making some toasted garlic bread. You had a good time, James? We've had some delicious salmon, all cooked in a little tin. Edible seaweeds, a little bit of a forage around for some rock samphire, some three-cornered leek, some uh, sea lettuce and some dulse, some cooked in kelp, some cooked in tin foil and parchment paper, both absolutely amazing. Uh, what would you do differently if we could do it again? I'd buy extra salmon. <laughs> that is all I was going to say. I was going to say, if I was going to do this again, the only thing I would do differently is bring more salmon. <laughs> All the very best. I hope you enjoyed joining us and take it easy. What do we say, James? Bye from the fish locker. Bye from the fish locker.